hello and welcome to candid talk again so i welcome you to this channel we're excited to have you and if you don't know what we are all about we are all about leadership growth and accountability and we are here to make sure that you get to be an all-round leader but also be accountable in your own life in your family but also in your professional life so today we are focusing on leaders if you want to be an effective leader this is your episode and let's get started Today, we are discussing navigating transitions or change with resilience. We talked about leadership last year in detail of what a good leader should be, what are the different types of leadership, navigating change, but that time we're looking at it in a different perspective. And today we'll be discussing how does a leader navigate change or navigate into transition with resilience. Now. Being a leader is a place where you are at and you're able to influence and motivate for a common goal. You don't have to be an expert. This is what some people get wrong. That being a leader, you have to be an expert on everything. No, leaders actually work with people around them who are experts and in most cases feed you with information that you take out there and shine as a leader. A leader has to be able to influence to motivate and align everyone in his team to achieve a specific goal for a specific objective. All those things we discussed. If you miss that conversation and you're a leader on this channel, please go back and watch. Now, today, navigating transitions with resilience. In all organizations or in all setups that we are in as leaders, we will face challenges who face things that are different from the normal day or what should happen or the ideal. The question is how do you navigate those with resilience and keep your team together to achieve the goal that you've intended for yourself and for the organization or your team. The first step is to ensure that there's clear communication or what we call effective communication in everything. If there is a change that you want to implement, for example, you have a business and you're moving from using one system to another. How do you move with people from that one system to the next without facing challenges? There has to be clear and effective communication. One, it shows the transparency that you're trying to put across. Two, the updates that come with that communication enable the team to transition effectively. Effective communication allows your team to trust you, allows your team to be a part of the journey of transition, the journey of change. So as a leader, to effectively manage change, to effectively transition from one space to another, from one system to another, from one strategy to another, there has to be effective communication that allows you to build trust have that open communication that will allow feedback as well from your team in order to get it right. We've talked about it in a previous episode, cultivating a positive mindset. As a leader, it is your obligation to ensure that your positivity allows your team to perform exceedingly well. When you're positive, you allow your team to stand out, to express themselves, to be accountable, but importantly, and most of all, you have to show your team that you're positive yourself, that this change you're implementing or that you're suggesting is going to work. The minute you doubt yourself as a leader, you lose your team. As simple as that. So an effective leader who's navigating change, who's navigating transitions has to ensure that they have a positive mindset that whatever they've set themselves up to do is going to work. At the same time, you have to be open to receive changes, to receive feedback and criticism in order to get it right. You have to be able 
to be adaptable, you're flexible, and at the same time, you lead by example. For example, if we're saying, um, I'm going to look at our workplace policy as an example, no eating from tables. That policy is there that whoever gets food at lunchtime does not eat from the tables of the workstations, I mean. So, you as a leader, they should not see you. You're the one eating from the workstation. Lead by example in order to have that change that you have implemented or you have put in motion to be actually acceptable, but most importantly, done by the, those around you. Remember, I've talked about that a good leader influences and motivates a team to achieve a specific goal or outcome. So you have to be able to promote adaptability, but also lead by example in order to have that change achievable, but also to learn along the way because you're adaptable. Things happen with change. You implement something and it doesn't go the way you want it to go. So what do you do? You have to be flexible and adapt and change immediately in order to achieve that specific goal. The other way of how a leader can resiliently or empower the team is to make sure that your team is really empowered or involved in the change process. How do you do that? The channels of communication have to be clear. The team has to be involved, empower, delegate, to see that the team that you're leading is empowered but also takes on responsibilities and tasks to be accountable for those specific tasks. That way you're involving and engaging them in order to achieve the goal. You're part of the team. They are part of the system, the core system, in order to be able to achieve the goals. We are talking about leaders who want to stand out during transitions, during changes. In every setup, there is change. We talked about this before. If you don't change, change will change you itself without you even asking for it. So you have to be prepared as a leader to navigate it with resilience. And of course, provide support. There has to be sort of training, emotional support. Some, some members of staff or your team might not take change well and could easily fall into mental illnesses or things that are not good for them. Are you able to provide emotional support, counseling services, training and development platforms or programs, resources to help that change be effective? There are so many things that as a leader you can do to help your team cope in the period of transition or in the period of change. And of course, you must promote well-being. Well-being is important. One of my policies as a person, I'm also a leader in different platforms, is to ensure that my team is happy, ensure that there's well-being, ensure that when they are, when they are, everything is fine, their families, themselves, those around them, they will implement the change you want, they will do the work effectively, and you will achieve at the end of the day. So are you a leader who is also empathetic? We'll talk about this in detail later, but you have to be able to promote well-being in order to achieve the change that you want to achieve, but also get the outcome that it is intended to get for you. Monitor and evaluate. When you introduce anything that is going to change in any setup or in any environment, one, you must monitor, is it working? Two, how is it working? What are the effects or what's the impact of this change? Three, how is it adding or leading up to the goal I intended it to, to reach? That is now evaluation. Those who are in NGO setup, they call it um, monitor, monitoring and evaluation. It's all a whole program of its own because it's important that whatever you do is monitored and evaluated to see if it has actually worked. And that setup also involves feedback. What is the feedback from all this process? What is, is it positive, is it negative? How can we do better? In that way, you have steps on making sure that change is effective and crown it by celebrating the change or the progress. 
one of the main things in, in most setups that we do things and we don't celebrate progress. We want the, the end, we want the end result. How about the progress we are in? We celebrate progress, people see the change is working and they are happy to keep moving with you because the goal is clear and the outcome is being seen. That way, they are able to say, let's move with our leader. Moving with you is important. You cannot do everything on your own as a leader. You have to be able to allow the team to be part of the process to achieve the intended outcome. So we've talked about a resilient leader who's going to take us through the transition, has to clearly communicate effectively. He must cultivate a positive mindset for all of us, promote adaptability and lead by example but most importantly, empower us, the team, so that we can achieve and be part of the process and be responsible and accountable. Provide support at the end of it all to help us achieve those goals. Monitor and evaluate the process if we're achieving it. And of course, celebrate progress to ensure that whatever we are working on is making sense and we are winning while doing it. Once you do those things or those elements have put in place or have, have communicated, you'll be able to be an effective leader in times of change. Leadership is tested most when there are challenges, when there are so many risks around you, but also in times of transition and change. As a leader, how resilient are you to keep your ship moving forward as a captain? To keep your ship moving forward without your team falling off how effective will you be in motivating and inspiring your team to stand out this year i leave that to you in the meantime watch candy talk with adele we've talked about so many things in leadership you'll be able to be inspired to lead your teams effectively and stand out in your leadership skills thank you for watching i look forward to seeing you next time as we talk more about leadership but most importantly, as we grow and be accountable in ourselves and those around us. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.